morning and welcome to um, a sort of um, the last sort of video I suppose um, of the Paper Dry Point series. Um, what we're doing this morning is I have a slightly larger square of paper than my demo pieces to do with the um, caves which are more sort of down here. And I am going to be in the next, and I am timing myself, in the next 10 minutes I'm going to um, use these tools in front of me and I'm going to construct the drawing, the cave again, but selecting the tools I want so I'm not putting everything in. So it's kind of going to be a test on me <clears throat> and I am kind of winging, winging this. Um, I have planned it to an extent, um, I, I, I've selected my tools I want to use. But there is no preliminary drawing, there's no sketchbook here, there's no pencil. This is what I'm working with. Um, there are a few things that um, are new to it and are new to be introduced, which I will go over at a later date, so just, just watch and enjoy. As I say, it will be a 10 minute exercise in the mark making, and then I'm going to do a follow up video of the inking, and also in which I will just talk about the one or two new introdu introductions to the method. I have my press set up here with my old embossing blanket because I'm going to be doing a bit of embossing um, and that is pretty much it. Okay so I'm going to be starting pretty much now for about 10 minutes. What I'm first of all going to do is I've got some sandpaper here, household very coarse sandpaper. I'm actually going to use this to emboss the surface, base surface I like the scrunchiness, base surface of the ground where the fire and the bottom of the cave. So I'm overlapping it and the little bits of sandpaper will emboss the surface of this. I am going to protect the back of my dry point with a scrap piece of, um, it's about sort of 100 gram paper just so I don't get any blanket marks on it because I don't want that, not on this time round. So I can see, you might be able to catch it in the light, it's a really beautiful emboss there. I'm just going to brush off to make sure there are none of the little bits of sandpaper getting anywhere on the paper, which will get in my ink. Next. Just cleaning the knitting needle. I'm going to use the knitting needle to kind of draw out a brief outline of the cave and I'm really pressing quite hard and I'm also going to use the knitting needle this one's just got a bit of a, a scratch on the bottom which is making a, a scratchy mark I actually want a smooth mark because I'm going to do the outline of the hills I liked, I liked that effect of the knitting needle hills so that's what I'm doing, I'm just doing a time check Okay, got some bits of dry point card here. I didn't actually cut these specifically for this. Scissors. These were actually bits left over from another project. I'm going to start, I'm going to be using these as a collage element to the um, cave. So I'm going to be, really want to work these, really want them scrunched up, torn up and they're going to be starting to overlay, to kind of create a, a rock flinty effect, don't like that one, that one's nice. Just going to tear this one up a bit. Be really, and I what I say when overlaying dry point card, I usually say a maximum of three under the press. 
anymore. The press really struggles to get the paper in, um, in sort of the depths, which can not only affect your drawing, but it can also damage your press. Um, so I usually say a maximum of three. Um, this is my fire. I'm going to try and make an attempt at a better fire. You wouldn't have thought I actually get fires going every single morning at this. Um, it's <laughs> I'm using an etching needle here. And I'm going to etching, use, I like the really scratchy marks I used on the, throughout the little ones for the logs and the embers. So I'm going to just really scuff that up. caves there. I'm just going to move these to one side because what I want to do now is cut the cave entrance with a scalpel. Really big, bold, black entrance. This is where I'm going to be peeling away the top layer. So I'm just literally, and this card's actually, you never know a dry point card, that's peeled rather nicely. It creates a nice torn effect. Sometimes the grain of the dry point card goes in a completely different direction to what you want it to, kind of envisioned it to go to. And you just got to work with it. This one actually has been rather kind and has gone some really, it's made some beautiful um, scummy marks. I like a good bit of good bit of scum. <laughs> good bit of scum. Oh dear. Anyway, um, okay. So they're going back in there somehow. I might just open up this one a bit. Greater. There we go. And I'm going to keep all these little off cuts because I kind of like like the fact we can build them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those to one side, I want to keep those though, and I'm going to use the sandpaper just to create still the background to the cave. Because although I'm adding collage, I still don't want it to appear as a, a big stark white element, so I want to have some tone. I've got my cheese, cheese zester, lime zester, whatever it might be, lemon zester. I'm just going to add, again, some texture just so it is not this behind when I put these on, any areas that still peek through, they're not sticking out as solid white. A bit round here. Okay, if you remember we had heels in the background which I did with the knitting needle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to emboss it under the press. This time I'm actually going to put actual, these are little bits of cedar cedar and they are actually going to go get embossed under the press these are um it's new growth on a cedar tree so the spine is very flexible and thin it's i'm not sticking a twig under there so it's absolutely fine under the press every time you put something under the press to emboss you are flattening some of your previous marks so try not to do this when you put something really delicate under there because it will get squashed and lose some detail. Okay. So they can peel off. You might notice a bit of green. It smells amazing because it's fresh cedar. It's got this beautiful scent that's just been squeezed out of it. I'm going to add the stems as a bit, a bit more depth. And I'm also going to... Um, Do a bit of detail near the trunk, just to really scuff it up a bit, to give a bit of a life. Now I'm also using the etching needle, I really like little details combination along here. So I'm adding the little etching needle lines along the top hill and the parallel lines, horizontal ones, along the background hill. I thought they worked nice contour lines. Very tricky to see when you're doing faint lines. You kind of sometimes bend down a bit to make sure you can catch it in the light. While my time pressure's on here, I feel I need to do some stretches. <laughs> get get my, my running shoes out. <laughs> okay. There we have... Oh! My fire's looking a bit... Um, 
limp, shall we say, at the moment. I'm going to give my fire a bit of life. I really like the, um, the smoke of that, but I'm also going to use some wet and dry just to add a bit of the smoke effect coming up. Just to give my fire a bit of, <laughs> of life. It's looking a bit nonplussed about things at the moment. Oh, look at this. I've got one minute to go. And this is the only reason I've added a time limit because I could spend absolutely hours on this and you'd all get very bored and you wouldn't learn anything. So it's, it's quite interesting to challenge myself to see if I can actually do this within <laughs> the 10 minutes. Before I do anything, I have to um, add the moon and I really like the copper piping. So we're going for the good old copper piping. And I wasn't too keen on the lines around it, so I've got rid of those. I'm using the scalpel. I might go one minute over, can I allow myself that, an extra 10% contingency fund? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm using the scalpel there to, um, peel the plastic away from the moon, because I'm using, I want it to be really black around the moon, so I'm just peeling away. There we go. Now I'm not going to bother peeling away the whole sky, even though I want it to be black, it's kind of a nighttime scene, dusk, um, because I can do all that in the inking. There's no, you know, I want some of these edge effects, so that's why I've peeled around the moon, but the idea of me peeling away the whole sky, I'm going to actually leave, do that in the inking. Um, I think. Just going to add some grasses down here, and I'm going to do that with my um, knitting needle. And a bit of the etching needle. And also, what I'm going to do is the sandpaper is great but at the moment it looks like there's a nice edge there to sandpaper which is good and yes and no i don't want that in this drawing so i'm just going to scuff up the edge a bit um so that when it comes to inking it's not so dramatic final thing i'm going to do a few details on the glass little spots the etching needle we get a nice contrast between some bold mark making areas and some detailed areas and I've got my little typeset it's the letter Z yeah, no. oh it's the letter N actually sorry I'm going to just add some little embossed areas and I think I think that might be us done just going to have a quick check that's going to go in there somehow. Don't like that straight edge. It's annoying. Go on. That will all get torn up, and I'll do that in the inking. I'll just lay it out how I wish it to lay out. What I, what will happen in the inking? Because I don't like this edge. I like the crisp edge of the scalpel line to the cave entrance. But again, when I will do that after I've inked up these pieces, I will take a pair of scissors and trim off their edges. Um, easier once it's inked up. Okay, 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 I think I'm going to roll with that. So that is how, yeah, that's, that's pretty much done, I think. The next video, we will be inking it up. And that will be, um, I'll be filming tomorrow. So thank you very much for your time.